name's Alex. Um, I studied at Stellenbosch University and I'll be teaching in Busan. My name is Nathan Mark. Um, I studied at the Cape Peninsula University of Technology and I'll be teaching in Jombuk province, uh, South Korea. I am Matthew Sneeman and I went to Stellenbosch University and I've been placed in Jombuk in South Korea. Hello, my name is Nangla. I completed my tertiary education from the University of Cape Town. I'm going to be teaching in Korea. Hello, my name is Daniela. I went to UCT a couple of years ago and I was placed on Jeju Island to teach English in South Korea through the EPIC program. Hi, my name is Michael. I'm from Cape Town. Um, I went to the University of Cape Town in the Western Cape. Um, I'll be teaching in Busan in South Korea. Hey, hi, my name is Chelsea um, and I studied at the University of Cape Town and I will be teaching in Kangwondo. My name is Jacques. Um, I went to UNISA, was studied through UNISA. Um, I'll be teaching in Jeju. My name is Stacey Lee Alexander. I studied at the University of South Africa, UNISA, and I'll be teaching in Guangzhou. My name is Mutusi. I went to Stellenbosch University. Uh, I'll be teaching in the province of Jongnam. Hi, I'm Amy. I study through the University of South Africa and I'm going to be teaching in Busan, South Korea. Hi, my name is Lauren. Um, I studied at Cape Peninsula University of Technology and I'll be teaching in Kyungbuk in Korea. I'm Miss Joshua Jafter. Um, I studied at the University of Cape Town and I'll be teaching English in Busan. My name is Monica Heathcote and I was with the University of South Africa and I will be teaching in Jeju. Hi, um, my name is Sean Draymond. Um, I studied at the University of Western Cape, UWC, and I'll be teaching in John Book in South Korea. Hi everyone, my name is Anissa Fredericks. I am I studied at um, CPUT in Cape Town and I'm a graphic designer. So I will be teaching in Gyeongnam province. So to be honest, for me, the most difficult part of the application process was actually getting um, documentation together in terms of your police clearance certificate um, and basically anything that had to do with the government. Uh, the most difficult part of the application was probably the lesson plans. So you got to hate doing lesson plans. Um, I'm a teacher that doesn't like a lot of admin work. Uh, I just like teaching, so that could probably be the, bit, the worst for me. The most difficult part of the application was getting the police clearance. Um, do that first before anything else. Uh, what was the most difficult part of the application process? So, for me, three things. The lesson plan. I think uh, my agent, um, Cliff, and they had to kind of like return my lesson plan for three times. I have never done a lesson plan before, so that was really difficult for me. And secondly, it was preparing for the interview. It was I was really anxious because I had no idea what to expect. But when I actually did the interview, it was really, really, it was okay. It was like relevant questions. The people that were interviewing me were really friendly um, and also gathering the documentation that is needed for the application process was really difficult. Um, the most difficult part of the application process was definitely getting all of those documents, so criminal record checks, access steals and all the rest, that was a bit of a mission. The most difficult part was making sure that I had all the documents as requested without any um, nitty gritty details that, that, that weren't meeting the requirements. Um, yeah, that was the most difficult part, to be honest. And specifically getting an apostle degree, especially living, living, in a, living in a city far away from the administrative capital, that was the most difficult part. What was the most difficult part of the application process? I think a lot of people have said this, gathering the documents was a very lengthy process and so my advice to anyone going through this is start early. Start earlier than you think you need to start because it takes a while, especially with the working with the South African government, sometimes the police clearance takes a very long time. Apply for that first, I delayed on that and it was a bit of a, 
uh, headache. So yeah, uh, start early with your documents because it takes a while. And yeah, the, it was a lot of running around to be prepared for that. Um, but it's also good news that the hardest part of the application is collecting documents because that's it wasn't really difficult. It was just time consuming. The the most p difficult part of the application, I um, would say, would be the nerves when it came to the interview. Um, but um, Cliff and Yanuk helped us through that um, excellently. The most difficult part of this application process for me was the fact that I was working and I needed to take off to go and get my recommendation <laughs> um, at ex employers to go and get my all my different documentation that I needed. I needed to take off. So it's always um, it's best if you have that free time at home just sitting at home, not doing anything at the moment, not working uh, while you are kind of busy with the application process because it takes time and you have to constantly go to this place, to that place, to, go to your previous schools for all that documentation. So I think that's the most difficult part of the process for me. Uh, the most challenging part of the application was definitely preparing the lesson plan. I am a, um, I've never taught before, um, so a lot of research went into that uh, with regards to just, uh, you know, finding out what, uh, you know, what needs to be in the lesson plan, how it needs to be done, um, yeah. The most difficult part of the application process was gathering all the documents and keeping track of everything. You have to organize with other people to get a lot of the paperwork and it becomes a bit of a waiting game. So it was really helpful having Cliff and Yannick just talk us through the process, really help us to reassure us when the application wasn't going as fast as we thought it would because it is a bit of a stressful process. I think the most difficult part of the application was preparing a lesson plan, seeing that I'm not a qualified teacher. The most difficult part of the application process was the um, just getting all the documents together and uh, then being able to apply for the, the position initially. The most difficult part of the application process was getting all the documents together. Uh, there was uh, quite a lot of documents we had to get together and it took quite a while, so there was also a lot of waiting. Um, but that's all fine, so the hardest part is over. The most difficult part of the application process was, I think, my lesson plan, because I haven't been a teacher before, but luckily Cliff and Yunok and my husband helped me out a lot with it. <laughs> Um, I probably would say like the gathering of my information and getting all my documents together, but with the help of Cliff and Yannick, it was made easier. And Noma is also a really great lady, so she just helped with that. So if you're doing this, go with her. <laughs>
absolutely easy and it's not even that long so you prepare well in advance for the interview and it all goes really good. The easiest part of the application I say I would say was filling it in um, I know my name and I know my birthday so that was quite I guess therapeutic uh, giving information you know um, but with that said uh, the lesson plan and all that stuff was quite difficult as well so um, give it a lot of thought and be prepared for those questions and be honest keep it honest. What the easiest part was um, well Cliff on your nooks, um, excellent um, tutelage throughout the whole process. Um, the easiest part of this application process, I think, definitely hands down, is gold key education. They guide, they guide you through everything. I don't think anything was particularly easy in the in the application. Um, however, the interview was much easier than I thought it would be. The easiest part of the application was probably filling it in because Cliff and Yannouk are really there to talk you right through it, as well as the lesson plan I found quite easy as I am a teacher and I also found that they gave us a lot of the information. Like, it's quite confusing sometimes filling out an application in a foreign country and they were really helpful in just talking us through where everything goes. I think the easiest part for me specifically was um, getting all the forms and documents done simply because I wasn't even in South Africa when I applied, I was in a different country and it was still doable, so um, it's definitely not that hard. The easiest part of the application process was definitely the, the visa application. <laughs> the easiest part of the application process was I think the interview, it was pretty very easy, easy going. The interview was very friendly, so I think that was the easiest part. Um, the easiest part was probably just making the decision to do this because I felt like I was ready and I wanted to, so everything else was sort of, yeah, had its processes in time. So for me, um, Gold Key Education literally just they made everything smoother. So everything I was a little bit unsure about, they answered those questions. They had guides that really guided you through everything in terms of your police clearance certificate, apostillation, um, and yeah, just made life easier in the application process. Applying with Gold Key was, was quite straightforward, um, seeing that Cliff and um, the Gold Key process and, and the people that work with him actually were, were so helpful from the first step to the to the last step. Uh, they were they were so informative and they literally take your hand and they walk you through the whole process. Uh, from the beginning, uh, I contacted them uh, before I did anything else and they helped me really from the get-go, uh, helping me with the contract, helping me with filling in everything, making sure my lesson plan was up to, up to scratch, uh, making sure my interview skills was where it needed to be. Um, they really did help. I wouldn't be able to go without them. Applying through uh, Gold Key Education was really helpful because whenever I had a hiccup, I could always WhatsApp or call um, the agent, the agency, and they were just so always so willing to help and like so hands on with the application. So when I felt like I didn't know anything, I didn't feel lost because I could always ask. Them. Well, yes. So basically, Gold Key Education took a, held our hand and took us through it step by step. It was quite incredible, actually. Um, I feel a little bit like I didn't deserve this because they did it all for me. <laughs> Oh, they helped with every every step actually, with gathering the documents, the order of the documents, and interview preparation, everything. I think the, the, the best part of the help was the interview preparation because you're guided pretty well and you know how to um, execute your interview. It made it, it took a lot of re um, stress off the whole process. Any question that I ever had was answered very quickly. Golki, I am pretty sure is the best agency to apply to Epic through. And I'm not just saying that because I'm biased, I'm saying it because I've done my research. So Golki made the process a lot easier and I felt very confident in the, every step of the way uh, going with them. So my advice to you is apply with Golki. It, it, it doesn't cost anything and it makes the process much, much, much smoother for you. Um, well, they took us through it step by step, reassuring us when we were um, nervous and didn't understand things. Um, applying with Gold Key Education made everything so much easier. It was 
there was no need for me to question anything, to wonder, to worry, because Gold Key Education, they literally take you step by step through each and every aspect of the application process, including the application form, exactly what needs to be done, the visa, the documentation that you need to go get beforehand. They literally help you through everything and make this process so much easier. I, I seriously do not think I was going to be able to do this without the help of Golden Key. Uh, you know, the assistance that uh, Cliff and Yannot gave us was absolutely invaluable. Uh, yeah, there's no way I was going to be able to do that on my own. Um, it was amazing going through a recruiter such as Gold Key, especially because they are very local and they deal directly with South Africans. So when it came to certain government documents and chasing down documents through different institutions, Cliff and Yannick really were there to show us the way. They were really helpful. I can only thank Yannick and Cliff for helping me through the entire process. As I said, I wasn't even in the country when I applied, but they really assisted me with everything that I needed, everything that I had to complete, and all the recommendations and assistance, even with my lesson plan, came from them. So they were really great um, in getting everything done. Uh, Gold Key has been amazing with with the assistance um, in the application process for teaching in Korea and I think without them I'd, I'd have been lost. So the easiest part of the application process was having Cliff and Yonok at Gold Key Education assist us. Um, they made it effortless and helped us with everything, every single step, so it was really great having them. Gold Key Education helped from 1 to 0 till 10. They Simplified everything, answered all my questions, stupid questions, simple questions. I think that was the best part. Oh, they were great. They were amazing. I loved them. They are the best parents I ever had. <laughs> no, they're amazing. Um, they really supported me through everything. Um, and they made it really easy to just um, send them a message whenever I needed anything or give them a call if I needed any help with anything. So that was great. So the thing I'm the most worried about um, in leaving for South Korea is the language barrier. Um, I don't speak Korean, but I'm really keen to learn. Um, but I think it will be, it's nerve wracking, but it's also kind of exciting to not be able to speak it and have to kind of finagle your way through um, getting your point across. Um, the biggest challenge teaching Korea might be teaching with a, a co-teacher, because I've never experienced teaching with a co-teacher before. Um, so that in itself might be a challenge, uh, but I think once I cross that hurdle, ah, it should be a breeze. The biggest challenge in Korea I think will be the language barrier. Um, I think I'll be teaching fairly younger uh, students, so that will be a challenge in itself. Uh, but hopefully that's something I'll be able to overcome, fingers crossed. As I get ready to leave for Korea, I'm most nervous about not going to a country where I don't know anyone. I, I have a fear that I might miss home a lot. Um, I'm also um, nervous about going to a country that I don't know the language. Oh. I'm the most nervous probably about the cold. I'm a little bit um, of a wimp when it comes to being cold, so it's going to be the first time I'll be in a country where it gets you know, a little bit close to zero, so that'll be quite an adjustment. Um, I'm most nervous about the language barrier, actually. Um, I think that might be a challenge, um, especially because um, Korean is like a language with characters. So yeah, that's the biggest um, nerve-wracking aspect of um, going to South Korea. I have no idea what to expect, even though I've done a lot of research. I mostly don't know what I'm walking into. Like you think you know something and then you get there and it's not at all what you thought it was going to be. So I'm a little bit... I'm nervous because I really don't know what to expect at all and I think probably the language barrier um, and maybe even cultural barriers as well that I'm not expecting to run into um, but mostly probably the, the language barrier. Uh, what I'm most nervous about going back is um, I would say the cold um, from what I remember the cold was very, it was very cold um, yeah what I'm most nervous about leaving to Korea is just that I know that I'm going to have the time of my life there because I've been preparing for it and I'm so excited for it. But 
what the, what makes me most nervous is just the fact that I have family, loved ones that I'm going to be leaving behind, and also the language barrier. I know that can be difficult um, because I've heard how difficult it is, but I am also looking forward to learning. What I am most nervous about is uh, communication. I'm very nervous about not being able to speak to anybody that I want to speak to uh, and express myself in a, in, a, you know, in a free manner. So I'm very nervous about that. I'm most nervous about the language barrier. I haven't learned a new language since I was in primary school, so it's been a bit of a process taking on that challenge, but I look forward to the opportunity of immersing myself in a new culture and language. I think the thing that I'm most nervous about is um, because it's not an English-speaking country, so probably um, like language barriers, but I'm also really excited um, to get to learn the language as well from the local people of the country. What I'm most nervous for is the the language barrier. I'm most nervous about the language uh, because I don't speak Korean so I will be learning uh, the language but I think the initial um, language barrier is probably the thing I'm most nervous about. I am most nervous about the weather, the cold weather. I think I can't handle cold weather but it's fine. I think it's just like trying to communicate properly but um, other than that I think probably the weather as everyone else has probably said <laughs> but getting a jacket should probably help me through that. Um, again the language barrier I think the hardest part about teaching in South Korea will be the language barrier um, in terms of trying to make sure that you're conveying the concepts you need to convey accurately and to the best of your ability while also realizing that your students probably won't have the full repertoire of English so having to monitor your English and um, simplify your language so you're not using like university grade jargon uh, when dealing with six-year-olds. <laughs> Um, the biggest challenge teaching in Korea might be teaching with a, a co-teacher because I've never experienced teaching with a co-teacher before. Um, so that in itself might be a challenge, uh, but I think once I cross that hurdle, ah, it should be a breeze. The thing I'm most nervous about, in all honesty, is the transport. Um, yeah. Seeing uh, different signs that I'm not used to, not knowing where to go, is going to be quite a challenge. I struggle to get around my hometown, so it's going to be quite a challenge. Okay, teaching, the biggest uh, challenge will probably be the language barrier for me, uh, and probably uh, people not understanding uh, what I'm saying and me not understanding what the person is communicating with me. So definitely language barrier, I think. The biggest challenge teaching in Korea, I think would probably be the language barrier. I'm quite a talker, as I'm sure you can tell, and I have a feeling that, um, yeah, there might be a few challenges there, but I'm going to make an effort to learn the language. The biggest challenge, again, is the language. Um, especially when you teach people who have no clue whatsoever about English and and just teaching from scratch it's it's a completely it's like a foreign thing so trying to to find the same ground as as someone who has no clue whatsoever about the language that you'll be teaching I think that will be the biggest uh, challenge as a teacher in South Korea and I think it's the same for the teaching probably also the language barrier and also having never taught before I'm a bit nervous about how that's gonna go um, but I'm pretty sure it'll be scary the first few times and then I'll get used to it. So I'm not too scared about it, I'm just anticipating with nerves. Um, I think the biggest challenge going back to Korea um, would be um, the langu language barriers and the different levels of students. Um, I think that, that would be the most difficult thing. Um, the biggest challenge will definitely, for me personally, be the fact that I don't have any of my loved ones around. If it get lonely, it's going to get lonely. But I know that I'm prepared for that. I'm, I know exactly that um, I'm going to be immersing myself in my work, making things, meeting new people, just to help me deal with that lon loneliness that I know I'm going to experience. Also, the language barrier could also be very difficult. Um, you can't exactly communicate with anybody at any time the way you would at home. 
So I think that could be quite challenging. And you have to actually be, pre pre be really prepared for it. What I am most nervous about is uh, communication. I'm very nervous about not being able to speak to anybody that I want to speak to uh, and express myself in a, in, a, you know, in a free manner. So I'm very nervous about that. The biggest challenge I think I'm going to face is the language barrier. I am currently trying to learn Korean, but it hasn't gone so well too far. So I'm hoping to do some more classes and help me ease into that process. I think the biggest challenge would be um, me not knowing the language. So I think the biggest challenge um, with teaching in Korea will be um, navigating my way around initially. Um, I think that will be the biggest challenge to find my way around, but I think I'll get used to it. Um, the biggest challenge will probably be also again the language difference, but I'm excited to learn Hangul, so I think that should be okay. So for me, in terms of the weather, um, I'm basically getting thermals and warm jackets, um, and that's pretty much it. Well, I love the cold. So six degrees, it's kind of nothing to me. Um, and I think I am prepared with all the warm jackets that I, that I kind of need, so uh, bring it on. The first thing I'm going to do is buy some thermal underwear, and then I'm going to buy a very big warm jacket when I get to Korea. It's going to be very cold. Okay, <laughs> I am doing a lot of shopping. Um, uh, and I also have like really cool bomber jackets so and like a lot of pollen eggs. Um, yay! Yes, so the cold, like I mentioned before, it's going to be pretty cold when we arrive. So preparations is big jacket, thermals and just, you know, getting a little bit strong for it. <laughs> it's six degrees. Um, I have tons of jackets and most of them are like filled with fur, so that's okay. Um, I'm excited about that and some thermal clothing as well. I'm mentally preparing for the feeling of being cold all the time. Mentally preparing for the ondol. I'm just hoping that wherever I stay has an ondol. Um, but also jackets, lots of jackets, lots of layers. And I've got snow boots from when I was in Michigan a couple of years ago. So yeah, snow boots. <laughs> we have I've got some thermal um, thermals that I've bought. And I've also got a jacket that I had previously in Korea, which um, I've been, probably will serve me well. I have already been um, buying a whole lot of coats and boots and everything. So I'm so prepared. I'm tired of this heat. So I, can't, I cannot wait to go and just experience the cold and cozy weather and stuff like that. Temperature-wise, it is what it is. I, I think I've experienced different types of temperature. Don't think the cold will be that much of a, uh, of a problem. Is it really six degrees? <laughs> um, it's cold. I'm going to pack lots of thermals and lots of fluffy socks. <laughs> um, I kind of got used to cold weather and snowy weather, so just I would recommend a huge jacket, some thermal clothing, um, and great boots. Thank you. You guys will enjoy it. So we're buying a lot of thermal wear. Um, no jackets yet. We'll get our jackets and wow. winter goods once we're there. Because uh, we probably find that the, uh, the quality is better over there than it is over here. Cold? I think I'm, I should be okay with cold. I'm not sure how I'm going to survive, but I'm going to see how I'm doing it. Get a jacket. That's what everyone said. I'm doing that. So do that. <laughs> So I'm most excited about the people, the safety, and the food, <laughs> I have to be honest. Well, I think I'm very excited about just a new experience, um, going to a new country, um, learning a new culture, and also just um, a new experience in education itself. Uh, that's, I think that's quite exciting. Um, just the experience as a whole, um, I've been placed in a fairly rural area, um, so that's very different to what I'm used to, so culturally it's going to be completely diverse uh, to what I'm used to at home. As I prepare to leave for Korea, I'm very excited um, to travel because I haven't been outside uh, South Africa, so this is my first time seeing another country. I'm very excited um, to eat the food in Korea. Um, 
I'm really excited um, while preparing to leave for South Korea because it's just such a great opportunity to travel and make some extra money. I'm most excited about um, the country and meeting new people, of course, as well as the program that I'm participating in. And yeah, that's, that's a very big part of um, my excitement regarding uh, South Korea. Um, I think the food and as far as I know, the province that I'm going to be in is very like niche. There's lots of nature, so I'm looking forward to hiking and lots of snow. So I'm looking forward to seeing all the snow, but mostly I'm looking forward to the food, <laughs> honestly. Um, I'm most excited about um, going back to Korea and experiencing Experiencing um, Korean culture again and the food. I really enjoyed the food um, and I look forward to um, staying on Jeju because it's um, a beautiful island. What I'm most excited about is learning more, immersing myself in the culture, um, learning the Korean language because I've been studying and but just to be surrounded with a different type of lifestyle. I'm so excited for that. I'm really excited uh, to meet new people, uh, you know, have different experiences, uh, socialize with people and just learn new things, taste different food. I'm most excited to experience a new and different education system. I've been a teacher in a public school system in South Africa for two years, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how a new country teaches. What am I most excited about? I'm most excited about the food and getting to know the culture. I'm excited to be um, diving into a new culture that I, um, as I've never experienced this before, and um, to be overseas. I am most excited about exploring Jeju Island um, and all the outdoor activities. I'm excited to get out of my industry, to take a break <laughs> from my industry for two years. Okay, so what I'm most excited about is the food and the culture and also just engaging with the people, submerging myself into everything.